the Thoughty Autie podcast. And I think if we're going to if we're going to tie in the autistic piece to this, which I am, mm. you know, I, I think is the important component for this podcast, is the is the association and, and reliance upon something to feel a different way, because so often uh, our autistic people, like ourselves, are struggling with yes. our nervous system or our anxiety mm -hmm. or sensory overload or yes. being able to feel social or feeling connected or mm -hmm. feeling too tired or yeah. whatever we are feeling on a magnified level and reaching for something that can quickly soothe how we're feeling or help us feel social in the moment or able to unmask in the moment because mm. you've had a few drinks and now you feel more comfortable. That's why this stuff can get out of hand so quickly and become problematic so quickly. And I, I'm a firm believer that addiction is the opposite of connection. Mm. That the more connection we have, the more security we have, the more healthy relationships that we have, the less susceptible we are to these things. But uh, as we know, autistic folks and social struggles and isolation and bullying and all the things that come with it, uh, uh, the experience, you know, I, I think it really pushes in the other direction to, to create a lot of destruction and damaging behavior. You know, I, I don't think the, f the fact that some substances are promoted socially is obvious like um isn't like a good thing like there is a big culture i i know that you know the us does have but in in the uk there is like a, a, a just a ridiculous lack of awareness about like the effects of like alcohol like even in the short term because people think oh just don't have it a lot and you won't get fatty liver disease and you won't you know, get all of these kind of dependencies and you might have to drink it to feel like, like to not get ill. Um, but it actually like with like the binge drinking of it, like um, I didn't know that you could die from having too much alcohol. Like it's served in a pub in a restaurant. I can just have it. I can just get it from Tesco's. I can like, you know. Yeah. And it's, what's the you legal know, drinking just... age in the UK, 18? Yes, 18. Yeah which, you know, you have all those those things of, of, you know, your brain developing and stuff and that just kind of magnifies the neural effects that, that that kind of stuff can have. Even like things like marijuana is, I think, can have impacts on your brain's development up to a point on and nicotine, I think, as well. Hey, up. Just popping on to say thank you for listening to this podcast this far. If you could do me a real solid... Please make sure to rate the podcast if you're on a podcasting streaming service and do all that like, subscribe, comment stuff on YouTube. Damn, even send a heart in the comments if you don't feel like typing. Make sure to check out my link tree, which is always down below in the description, or head over to my Instagram page at Thomas Henley UK for daily blogs, podcast updates, and weekly lives. This podcast is sponsored by my favorite noise cancelling noise reducing earbuds that you can adjust the volume on really really great thing they're called dbuds and you can find the affiliate link down in the description of this podcast for a 15 percent off discount anyway i hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast that's all from me i think you know definitely one of the kind of the negative life experiences that i feel um very very strongly about is the the social isolation aspect of being autistic like to a certain extent we struggle with isolation at school like being isolated from from groups and people um, but in, in adulthood especially that transition from school to adulthood or school to university like you are not put in scenarios where you're around people like you used to like there's it's such a, a difficult experience you do, you're like okay I need to find people <laughs> like, um, and when, when you're, when you've had all these negative experiences with, um, people in general, when you, when you're younger and even, even in ad adulthood, like it's very, very difficult to, to feel like one, you, you, people will like you or you will, you couldn't find a friend or some, someone, um, but also that like 
there are those people out there. Like I remember, like for a long for the longest time, I didn't think anybody was like worth investing in because I I just had such a negative bias on my experiences with other humans. So I was like, neurotypicals, I can never I can never talk to them. I can never have any kind of trust in them at all. Um, and it was only until I kind of started to push myself to kind of get out and in the world that I experienced some like positive experience with it with it um but it's you know I, I consider myself quite a driven and, and motivated person you know despite my my mental health conditions um you know I, I I just can't like fathom just just how difficult it could be for a lot of people to um to find that that sense of connection and fun and you know doing activities with people like it's it's so easy just to just to have a dependency on something like instead than 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 doing that yep i think that's that's really the crux of the issue um is that it's a lot easier to rely on something that you can mm. easily access to make you f to change how you feel than people um, like yep. you can't always like even if you organize something it, it could be delayed it could go it could change it could, like something could happen yep like you just don't want to like invest yourself emotionally in stuff and it's like or i i could just have this thing and then so i don't feel bad about the other things i can just always have this when when i want um <laughs> you know it's um it's it's much easier to to slip into that um when you are you know, isolated, you don't have friends, you don't really talk to your family much. Absolutely. And I, I think you're spot on. And I think that if we polled people and looked at research, that you would see that the statistics would be alarmingly high for those mm -hmm. of us who are neurodivergent or those of us who really struggle socially and in relationship and the correlation between substance use. Um, and it's just increasingly high. And because what you're describing, right. And, and so many of us experience is that loneliness that in that, mm. that constant longing for belonging, but the inability to access it, it's a yeah. lot easier to drink a four pack of cider and dissociate from that or disconnect from that or numb that out temporarily. And then not acknowledge the physiological and psychological effects of relying on something to feel, to feel differently. Definitely. And I, I think as you, as you said about like the mental health aspects of it, I mean, there's like a ton of crossovers between autism, ADHD, mental health, like, and also mental health and addiction. So it's like, we, you know, and then I suppose you also have like the aspect of routine to things. That was a big thing for me, like with alcohol, I had a routine that I did each, each night that, you know, even even when I wanted to stop doing it, it just felt wrong, and it caused me anxiety to not do the thing. Like not not necessarily just because of like the feeling that it gave me, or or anything like that. Just just the fact that I was changing my routine from something that had been a part of me for like months. That was so, so much harder, and then, you know, obviously going with the withdrawal and stuff from having those things. It's 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 like a double whammy. Like you dysregulated and also you don't have your regulating thing. Yep. I think you just explained that pretty perfectly. Um, we, we all know how important routine and structure and sense of familiarity is for, for autistic mm -hmm. folks. And it can be a routine that revolves around something that you know is not healthy for you. And that can make it f even more complicated to, change that behavior because sure. it's just a, an extra layer to and challenge to making any sort of adaptation or change to that because of the transition the the, the structure the i know at 4 p.m i do this thing uh, yeah. i know at 4 p.m i go to this place like yeah and that for a lot of us is is very comforting uh, even when it's something that isn't useful or healthy hmm. 
I think the the there definitely is another element which you know I think we talked a bit about on um a new pod uh about like Alexa Fimer and stuff like it's um it's it's very much the case that I I I feel like a lot of autistic people we tend to gravitate towards these like blanket regulation methods like some of them are good some of them are bad obviously like for me um blanket regulation would look like going to the gym you know like um just regulates me something that i do not necessarily bad for me actually quite good for me um but it's you no know, if i'm feeling something that's negative or experiencing something that's negative it's not like i'm tackling that at the at the cause or identifying how do i feel about that how do i feel and what is causing me to feel this way um and being able to make that connection between them to like process things and do things that actively will make my situation or my feelings about it better like it just sometimes feels um easier just to have all of these different blanket regulation methods that i can use to make myself feel better you know it could even be things like stimming or like um eating some food that i like or you know all all of these things that make me feel better but not necessarily like um it's not necessarily like taking time aside to process and get through things yeah i think that's where the the really deep challenging work happens right is when we're really getting into the what's happening behind the scenes why am i feeling this way how can i change this behavior hmm. that's a lot of mental energy and i think it's a yes. lot easier to default to just what you're saying blanket behavior to say i know this works you know like i don't have to think much about it i know it makes me feel better i know it makes me feel mm -hmm. different than i'm feeling right now and life is so hard that i think it's always a lot easier to reach for the thing that we don't have to exert the extra effort or mental energy in, into yeah it's like having a button like um you can just push this button feel good yeah yeah just keep pushing that button when you feel bad <laughs> like you know, <laughs> you know it might, might make you feel good and you might have a good like feel like you have a good life um but like you're pressing that button all the time and it's uh, for everything and you're not like letting yourself feel bad about things you're not like you know um really tackling things at the root um i think as as well like one of the things that kind of drew me into um alcohol like i know, I know you're saying that addiction can be a, like cause like suicidal feelings um especially when it's like impacting your life a lot and you feel a lot of shame about it um but also like i think there was kind of a point in in my life where i kind of i was sort of using my um ideation for it um as like a crutch it's like okay this is going bad i can always just just not be here if i want to um as soon as i stopped doing that like obviously that's great like it's, i'm not complaining about that but then there's like okay there's, there's other options like i could drink instead of like I have this crux gone now, even though it's a negative crux, it's like, but now what? Like, and that now, now what do I do to, if I don't have that option, how do I feel good? And it's like, you know, if you're kind of in deep depression and you don't have the energy to do things and you don't really feel like you have the supports around you, you don't feel positive about things in your life, you don't experience pleasure from things, it's like supplementing with different neurotransmitters by the form of substances or processes is just very attractive, like as as something else. Um of a you know, obviously mental health, like you, you generally just don't care about yourself as much as you should as well. So it makes it quite easy to um damage yourself, I guess. Yep. Yeah, that kind of circles back to what you were saying before of when you're in a bad mindset, when it's easier to just say, screw it, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we so often, not just autistic people, just people in general, 
just want to change how they feel. Yeah. Um, we don't, you kind of just alluded to that. Like a lot of us, myself included, like we don't want to feel bad. We don't want to feel yeah. pain. We don't want to sit with a negative emotion and we want to change that very quickly. Hmm. And I know that's a generalizing statement. I, I think a lot of people would, would opt to not sit with the discomfort. Yes. And sometimes we do just have to, to sit with how it, how bad and how painful things can be. Um, because trying to change how you feel, trying to alter how you feel with a substance, it's just a Band-Aid fix. It's not mm -hmm. something that's a long-term solution. It is a very temporary, short-term solution to, to, to an experience. And I, I think we lose sight over that because we just have such a hard time in those spaces. And I suppose that kind of goes goes around to like this idea of like delayed gratification and stuff like it's just, you know, pretty much everything in our life is like kind of designed to hook us in and like get us to say like screw it and, and do something. It's like you have all these adverts that say, oh, be impulsive, do these things and just go on holiday even you know, like you might not be so financially sound. Um, just do this, just do that. You'll feel good from having this and eating this and. You know, um, like I don't, I don't think it's a, it's a sort of illogical ass assertion to say that you know people don't want to feel bad. Like it's, it's, you know, I don't think anybody likes like the nature of it is that we don't like it. But um, you know, so I think there is a lot of use in having that kind of delayed gratification mindset to things about you know life you know life is not a movie all the time you know you you go to the bathroom you have times where you can't do things you you have to brush your teeth you have to get up in the morning you have to go to sleep every night there's all of these kind of boring monotonous self-care things that you do that just don't have any like apparent benefit in the the short term um and like you know it's 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 difficult and i think you know in a lot of areas of life people can kind of get fed up with things and and not having this kind of glamorized idea of what life should be like um you know it's 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 it should be your kind of default mode your your default kind of feeling should be just feeling meh I guess just normal, like, and that's not fun. Existing. Yeah, that's not good. Like, sometimes you want to, you want to feel the high, and you want to feel great, and you want to feel lovely, and uh, usually doing that kind of thing, you even even if it's something like innate, like socializing with people, like you, you or watching some watching a movie, like once that goes down, you still you always feel worse than you did, like after. So it's. I don't know. I think it has a lot to do with expectations and kind of like the culture that's that's formed at the moment around um, that kind of mentality of you know just screw it and have fun and you know it's 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 fun, it's exciting and it's nice to think about that, but it's not like it's not going to like change your life. Like it's going to impact it negatively. Yeah, well, yeah, because then you're always chasing the next thing, right? Like mm. the vac that vacation's never as good as the next vacation that's coming up, and that meal is never as good as the next meal that you're romanticizing. And I, I think we want to do that. Like we want to escape. I think that's reality. Um, but you're right. I mean, I think I think a lot of existence is just like, meh, like just yeah. kind of existence. And yeah. Um, <laughs> And I think for autistic people who are deep thinkers and like analyze a lot and, and feel at a very intense level that existence is not always a, a pleasant place to be. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like, how the hell do I change what's happening for me if this is kind of how I feel all the time? It's like, oh, I could get better, but then, you know, what, why, why would I get better if it's just like this all the time it's you know you see on social media people posting like all the highlights of their life you know you only see the the uh, the athletes on the podium you don't see like the getting up in the morning and going to training and waiting for things <laughs> like 
<laughs> the and little... failing and struggling too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like ninety percent of the battle. Um, yeah, to get onto that podium. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting topic, you know. And I don't know. I, I, I think that we could explore this in so many different arenas and and, and vantage points, totally. and uh, yeah. it's. It's something to just be mindful for to your listeners. Like, really pay attention to when you reach for something, why you're doing so. The why behind the action is important. What it's mm. making you feel like during the experience and how you feel after. 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the after effect is is not good. Um, we're talking about a lot of regret and shame and depression and all sorts of stuff that we're trying to run from or avoid or change that actually get amplified um, post uh, substance use or post drinking or post gambling. Mm-hmm. And, and, and all of that stuff comes flooding back. And that's, that's again, why you have to reach for it again, because it, you're like, Oh wow. Wow. That this is even worse than before. Let me try again. I think not that, that I don't want to leave on a message of hope, but <laughs> I do want to just be really honest that, you know, it, it, this is very, this is cyclical behavior. It's just, it, it exists in a loop a lot of the time. So hmm. it's really about really examining this stuff and stepping back and talking to someone and, and getting some support around it. If you feel like you are struggling, if you feel like you have behaviors that feel like they're out of your control, or you start to notice that they're becoming harder to resist, I think be proactive, you know, like reaching for support before it gets to be too late because once you're in the thick of it, it's it's very hard to to climb out of. Hmm. 